Hello and welcome to another episode of Dowser Wisdom, the art and science of dowsing. I am so delighted to welcome Alicia Aratin to our show today. Alicia is a chemist and an environmental engineer by profession and metaphysics by passion for over 50 years. She also is a reverend recognized as such by the government of Canada. Alicia teaches internationally and works performing healing sessions on people from around the world. She has created her own system called the Science of Dowsing, which incorporates elements of both ancient wisdom and modern science to help people release various types of health problems or life predicaments. This system encompasses all levels and applications of dowsing with an incredible amount of spiritual and scientific knowledge blended together to create a comprehensive and easy to follow course. In her seminars, Alicia uses the latest accelerated learning techniques, which allows people to maximize comprehension. Her classes are always well attended due to her unique blend of knowledge, wisdom, and and humor. Over the past 30 years, she has traveled extensively throughout the world to teach, lead, and inspire, as well as to heal and consult with people to bring their lives to the next level of awareness. As a natural born healer, she shares her gift generously. Like all the great teachers, Alicia started with transforming her own life. She now bases her classes and one-on-one -on -one practice not only on the ancient Egyptian school of vibrations and new medicine, but also her firsthand experience with alternative modalities such as medical Qigong, dowsing, Reiki, EFT, as well as many European techniques, transforming family patterns, releasing entities, etc. So highly, highly credentialed. Alicia's mission is to empower and inspire people to reach their full potential by assisting in the manifestation of their dreams and life purpose. Her YouTube channel is viral among dowsers, dowsers and seekers from all life paths, and you can learn more about her at intuitivedowsing.com. Oh, I just want to let wow. your bio sink in for a moment. <laughs> Are you sure it was about me? <laughs> Oh my goodness. Well, you know, it's so funny. I may I ask, even before we jump into how you got started, what is the ancient Egyptian school of vibrations? Well, I'm not it's, familiar. it's something uh what we have learned in Europe when I was young. Ah. And you may probably big part of it is the sacred geometry. Ah, uh, okay. But it was interesting <clears throat> because in very early stage of my of my uh, life in Canada, I was invited to one of the conferences, and there was um, also uh, a gentleman. Oh, I forgot his name. He's he's quite famous mm -hmm. for his books and research. I will remember in a moment and I was speaking about something there was discussion and I and I was speaking uh, on the topic and then he he uh, started to talk and he said well do, did you hear what she said she, he said she she never used this beautiful descriptions which we have here which mm. are eye and ear catching but they call things by their function. Mm. So vibration of shapes, not sacred geometry, for example. Oh, interesting. Right? So uh, I was brought with it. And that's why at the beginning, I was attending different courses to, to, to find out the vocabulary, which is popular here, mm. just because I didn't want to... Uh, you know, I I didn't want to mix uh, two version of the same and bring um, kind of misunderstanding to people. Sure, so, sure. So school of vibration was about how to organize the energy mm. in a room in your environment uh, in order to uh, cooperate with you or rather working for you. And yes. with you, not against you. We have Feng Shui, which talks about similar things, of right. course. 
from right. from the um, Chinese uh, system, which I also studied, be just because I I I am fascinated by uh, you know all those modalities coming to the same. Yes, on the very top, mm -hmm. the bottom, mm -hmm. depending how we work, how we look at it, but being so different. Um, way of pursuing the topic and therefore it shows us different faces of the same which mm. fascinates me very much mm. and I like people to uh, you know to understand that, that, that we can come up to the same through different paths yes yeah well and I think your experience speaks so beautifully to that because you are from Poland originally, yes? And uh, you are now based in Canada. Tell me about what brought you to Canada. Well, situation in Poland. Yes. And right. first, first is, it was political situation in Poland, but also my personal life. Yeah. Um, you know, um, the new medicine, which I really... Uh, apply very much in my own life and for my clients and friends um, is about finding the the place and finding the courage in yourself mm. to first of all own everything what happens to you that it's your creation and it's nothing bad with it even if we make mistakes in life but first of all, it is about owning this, all the predicaments and all the beautiful things which happens to us. And right. then going from there into how we can solve this problem using ourselves, understanding ourselves. Right. And for very many years, I thought just because I had those those specific out of this world, like let's say experiences when I was small child, um, I I didn't believe in in the power of mind. I thought that spiritual part is the most important because that will help us to solve all the problems. And then slowly with time, I realized that. We are human beings, not without a reason. So there is this famous, I think it was Carlos Castaneda who said that, but I'm not sure. Um, he said that there is a huge difference between being a human, between human being and being a human. Mm. Mm -hmm. and, and only people who really pursue the spiritual development are able to understand the difference and ponder upon it and learn from that. So I started to look into the brain and as an engineer, and probably that brought me to becoming an engineer because it wasn't yeah. my passion, but somehow I was brought uh, to become an environmental engineer and and then chemist because I thought that that um, numbers that the universe operates on numbers mm. and if we know if we understand numbers we will understand to the point we will understand how universe operates not what is the universe but how it operates then um, from there we can go further and think about it this way if universe is built is based on numbers then only thing in our body let's say or our reality here material world here is build of atoms mm -hmm. now atoms are based on numbers so again it brought me from this very spiritual um 
universal kind of point of view into the matter. And I understood that the brain is, is involved in all this. And I have to study the brain in order to bring deeper understanding to people. So here is dowsing, which uses which uses frequency which our brain operates in and uses different vibrations or different like a certain groups of vibration, let's say. Mm. Okay? Because if we will talk about colors, for example, even even in dowsing, and we will talk about the color yellow, then yellow, which is closer to the orange, will have different qualities than yellow in the very middle, which is pure yellow, mm -hmm. and then yellow, which is closer to the green color, to right. the heart. That's right. That's why we have infra um, colors, infra and ultra and so on. We know only red, ultra, uh, um, ultra red, um, infrared, sorry, mm -hmm. and um, and infrared. But in fact, all colors have those qualities. Mm. And dowsing helps us to distinguish between those two. Because so, of the frequency, right. Yeah. So the dowsing helped me also to understand the brain. Mm. and also heal through the brain. And that's what I love to teach now. Mm. So it sounds like your spiritual journey started very young. Is yes. that what you're saying? Because it's interesting, Most people, a lot of the people that I talk to, it kind of starts the other way. Maybe they're more in that scientific realm and then they discover. But for you, it was like, oh, I need to connect with the world of matter, the world of body. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it started when I was a small child. Mm. And I have seen, especially during the night, I was woken up and I saw different things and I was very, very afraid. It was very scary. Mm. And one thing which I knew somehow, I couldn't understand at that point any of it. Um, what I, what I knew is that if I will say anyone, even a word, then my parents will be punished. Mm. Not my brother who was sleeping next, next, in next room, but my parents. Mm. So, and I was kind of paralyzed. So I was lying in bed, couldn't do anything, observe this, was scared like heck. Yeah. And I knew that I cannot open my mouth about it. So um, often I was crying, telling mm -hmm. the truth, because it was scary and I felt very alone and isolated with all this. And therefore I decided that I, when I will get, um, get older, I will understand this. Mm -hmm. I will do all I can to understand it. And I think that's why I... I mean, there was two reasons why I became uh, a chemist and environmental engineer. And uh, so, uh, my father spent five years during the Second War in the camp. Mm. And so when we were born, my brother, who is two years older than than I and, and myself, so uh, my father said that because he's sick, I have to, I have to have um, education which will, uh, which will allow me to work and make decent money. Yeah. So because mom will not be able to support me if she will, if she will be left alone. Mm. So he practically made me to go into into science scientific but then we can say well maybe for that reason he yeah. he was in my life that's right, right my father right. Was, was living long after uh, i finished the the school and then i finished the un university and so on and and but when i could 
I escaped from it. Mm. Yeah. And because I was a freelance journalist, which is, of course, um, you know, in Poland, so it was, um, I was using my my mother tongue, but um, I just decided to leave this technical profession and go to publishing house. And I was publishing mm -hmm. books, editing, sorry, books yeah. about art, mostly theater and okay. cinema. So, you know, sometimes it's complicated. Yeah. Because when I came to Canada, I would, I would assume everything but that my hobby will be my profession. Mm. And my profession will be my hobby. What was my profession became my real calling. Yeah. And as I said, maybe that's why I came here. Wow. That's amazing. So it's, yeah. it's, it's complex, you know. Of but, course, right. But when you are first generation of, of, um, of immigrants, you... Um, you open completely new world. And yes. it's not about what political system you come from, because it, let's let's face it, it's all the same. <laughs> right. Um, well, yes. Yeah. More obvious than before <laughs> that it's all the same around the world. But yeah. the thing is that when you come to a new country, uh, first you have to learn language and we we didn't learn English uh, at school, of course. Um, and second, you have to learn about the country. Mm -hmm. That's right, how it operates. And sometimes they really, that's strange and so on. So, so again, that's why I was taking the courses to find out what vocabulary people use to describe certain things because mm -hmm. it was completely different than my vocabulary sure sure so how did you well so take me now in your journey and i you know there are no straight lines in our life stories right that's yeah. uh, i i love that and yet i love to the um the ways that the circumstances the coincidences the way that our paths are shifted always in hindsight we can say oh that's okay maybe that's why i was brought here or what have you I, I i love those stories um how did you get introduced to dowsing when did you start um dowsing well, it was um well telling the truth dowsing in poland mm. was and is quite popular very very many people use the said nobody nobody see it as something strange or you know uh, out of this world or or whatever uh, superstitious let's say but uh, especially when i was on university uh, there was an engineering um, organization and we were doing the research on the highways uh, finding underground water, for example, mm -hmm. because there were there are those are places when there is uh, most of um, accidents, road accidents. So, mm. we were, as an engineers, you know, we were kind of we would douse the not highways because we didn't have highways at that time, but the roads to mark those places with St. Andrew's, Andrew's cross, which is this cross, mm. uh, which as a shape is to, to awake you. Mm. That's why you see St. Andrew's cross at the, at the crossing of, before the crossing of, for example, train um, line. Yeah. You know, because it, it just says to your subconscious, open pay up, attention. pay attention, pay attention now, you know. Yeah. 
so we were doing things like this, of course, for free, just just as a as a volunteer work to, to mark those places. So I always thought that dowsing is something what is very very useful mm. and should be treated as such. But on the other hand, because we were taught on the ba- based on. Uh, the discoveries in Egypt in 1930s and mm. majority of papers which were which were written in in French was translated or translated into Polish and that was our basis so we have this scientific approach it was not self-discovery mm. but rather everything was very precisely defined what mm. is this? What is that? What is ley line? What is, you know, grid? What is this? What is wavelength? And what type of wa- wavelength wavelength we have? And so on. And so there was no misunderstanding of, of um, definition because right. definition is precision of understanding. It's about precision of understanding. And that's why when we have uh, HDTV, then we see more precise, precisely the picture than on regular TV. Right. So that, 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 that means definition. Right. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. all we will do and in dowsing, I think it's a crucial thing for us before we will do anything we need to have a definition of this and even if it's unique problem because it's your problem or my problem we need first to define the problem Mm. and as my teacher one of my let's say gurus um, of um, of dowsing there said um he said once to me, you know, sometimes you think three days about the, the question or the, the problem to get an answer in 10 seconds. Mm. And because we need to narrow down, know what we are asking for, what we right. want to know, and therefore how we can approach this. And if there is more than one approach, then we need to find out which approach would be better. But first, we have to define the problem. Right. 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 And that's through the asking of the questions. Yeah, it's so it's so true. And well, and what you're saying. I do uh, not ask questions because I wasn't taught to ask questions. I rather have a conversation with pendulum, which means with myself. Yeah. So I would, and all highly precise um, dowsing instruments will require statements, not questions. Mm. So tell for, me more. Yeah, tell me more about that because I think, so for uh, example, people yeah. who work with Leher antenna or universal pendulum, you mm. do not ask questions uh, such as should I go to. Um, should I go for vacation to Greece in March? Right. But you rather say vacation in March in Greece. Okay. And the pendulum says no. Okay. Other. So let's check months. No. Let's check then the country. Yes. It's Exactly the same because our yeah. body knows what is the answer yes and what is the answer no. Right. But when you ask when you ask questions, your whole body is kind of focused on, and especially your brain, focus on this problem. Give me the answer. I have to find the answer. That's brain. Um uh, that's brain role in our life. Mm. Bring us the answer to our questions. It doesn't know everything, but what it knows, it starts to scan the waves in our brain. Right. 
to find out which is compatible with this. But because we are in very hectic state, tell me the truth, tell me this, tell me this, and whatever, then it's harder to get the answer. When you, when you say, when you make a statement, it's like, okay, I already said it. That's, that, that's fine. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. I said it, let it decide. And it will say, ah, oh, your statement is not, not real or not true. Yeah. Or your statement is true. But your brain is a lot more quieter because you already stated this fact. Okay? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's the difference between questions and answer uh, and, and statements. And statements. And it's not a matter of that there are two different types of dowsing. Mm -mm. One asking questions or as someone else said once, uh, well, you know, you only say this in uh, uh, in health. In health, you use statements, and in every day, they dowsing you use questions. No, you just when I talk to you, then I then uh, we have a conversation. That's right, and it's exchange yeah. of ideas. We don't have to agree, so you will say, well, not necessarily my point of view on this is that. But it's still, we are exchanging things. And this, in dowsing, we exchange those thoughts with the universe by bringing the, uh, the energy connected with this predicament or the problem we want to solve, and then checking compatibility and mm -hmm. then the pendulum says mm, no mm -hmm. it's not compatible or yes it is compatible right that's what kinesiology does that's right yes yeah so this is what this is really interesting because something when we when you and i chatted before we hopped on we had talked about your definition of dowsing, or not your definition, but the definition of dowsing, how how one defines dowsing. And you make this distinction of between dowsing and say kinesiology. Um can you can you speak to that a little bit more? Yes, absolutely. I was uh, speaking on kinesiology, a conference uh, well, more than four years ago because on the four years we were on standby. But um, before that, our Healing Touch conference and so on, on many conferences which have nothing in common with dowsing, but they use the body. Mm. And the body will, or polarity, and the body will give you the answers. But it doesn't mean that you are dowsing. Because dowsing, by definition, requires a tool which yeah. withdraw the energy and mm -hmm. helps anyone to see. That's why dowsing is so amazing and can be used by anyone everywhere at, with any problem. Because it does nothing else but withdraw the energy and the energy makes this tool move. So you don't have to learn how to how to, how the body will respond, which is yes, which is no, which is you know mm -hmm. when client should look when you have a bigger problem, uh, which kinesiology of course uses and so on. You don't have to do this because both of them operate on the same principles that in our body there is a, a specific level of energy when we talk about when the answer to the question, I will use the word answer, but when your statement, statement or your question is true or it's not true, that's right? So we can say, my name is Alicia and it's this, and my name is George and it will be weaker. Mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm, right. I don't have 
the energy to withstand what you, what you or I will put there. Okay, there is misalignment. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Same is with dowsing, but because in dowsing, the energy will flow because not everyone can sh can feel the energy. So the energy will flow out and show itself through the movement of the pendulum. So mm -hmm. for example, this is my yes, and this is my no, and I'm making it up right now. For someone else, this is yes, and this is no, and so on. So mm -hmm. you have the additional tool, which is a pendulum or a dowsing rod, mm -hmm. to show you what energy inside of your body is, what is the level of energy in your body, which means if your body agrees with your statement or disagree with it. And what is interesting is, at least to me, is that, for example, kinesiology is highly recognized technique, modality. Yes. The same is uh, touch for help. That's right. They have license. They are recognized by governments. They are official organizations. Yes. Mm -hmm. We assist in healing. Dowsing is a bunch of hobbyists. Mm. Which are not recognized by anyone but themselves. Hmm. And majority of us are happy because, well, there is no license to be a dowser healer. Nobody really says that you are a master. Mm. I always say to my to my students, you are the master, not when I will give you the paper saying so, but when your students mm. and your clients will talk about you as a master. Mm. Only then you are the master, but never in your own description of yourself or because you have a paper. Right. Right. But, right. So those organizations still use the word dowsing in their work. Why? You know, mm. this is this is amazing thing about dowsing. That is a modality popular among people, but because there is something unusual in dowsing. Dowsing fits any possible methodology you use to heal, to find out, to, you know, to uh, to find a solution to your problems and so on. Because it is purely about the energy, nothing else. And you don't have to know anything you yeah. don't you can go for courses, but you don't have to. If you right. know how to find your wavelength and you know what is your yes and what is your no, then you are ready to go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I but really love how you put that where um so you make this distinction, you know, some some people in the community call it body dowsing, what you're calling kinesiology, not dowsing because dowsing requires the instrument. But what I love about what you're saying there is it's such, it just evens the playing field in a way. Anyone can pick up that instrument. Anyone can pick up the pendulum or a dowsing rod and use it. They don't have to be an intuitive or, you know, they empath or feel things in their body. ESP, extra sensor. Right, right. That's right. So it's up for absolutely everyone. Yeah. And that's the beauty of it. And that's why, in my opinion, it is so popular. It is so very well received by so many. But we also need to remember that for the future generations, <clears throat> we need to think about purity of it. Hmm. Which means... I don't mind if people use body to find the answer to their questions. But 
as long as they know that they call it body dowsing, but it's not really dowsing per se. Mm. The problem is that in North America we don't have set of set of definitions. True. All right. So just because it was self discovered, just because it's humongous uh, continent, and there are pockets of people here and there, and they found their own way, and it's fantastic. But now. In the time of internet and 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 easier connection, we need to bring everything to one understanding. When you take the sacred geometry, when you take feng shui, you have precise definition, and nobody will tell you that, um, uh, for example, certain things from feng shui feng shui are the sacred geometry. They are feng shui. However, they approach the problem similar way as mm -hmm. sacred geometry would. And I think that for the future generations, we need to preserve mm. knowledge about what is the core of it. So we will not bring more misunderstandings and... Um, superstition in it because sure. we don't that is last thing which we need sure it so just that that, that is... codifying of the field and kind of having those it's interesting because lee barnes who i also interviewed um talked about how in the uk they have very specific language just like you were describing just it. so that you know exactly what you're talking about because you know he gave the example of ley lines that that can mean different things to different people and uh and so for example they i think they call it geopathic uh, energy lines or something like that, like there's specific language. And uh, so it's really, it's, it's very interesting. The point that you raise of, um, to preserve it, uh, going yeah. forward. And, uh, yeah, because if you will yeah. travel through Europe, mm -hmm. and you will talk to dowsers who are dowsers really no, having pendulum does not mean that you are a dowser. You can say I'm dowser because I have the pendulum and I use it. That's fine. But when you talk the, uh, to dowsers who are either uh, healers or a water dowser or whatever, right. mm -hmm. they will have a common vocabulary. It doesn't matter if you are in Poland or in France. When you say geopathic stress, Mm -hmm. they, will, they will tell you four or five uh, things, uh, uh, situations, let's say, which are creating geopathic stress. Mm. Not other things, but those, and so on. So there is a set of definitions. And when I came here, I couldn't understand. I remember that I went once on the panel discussion about ley lines and i'm thinking so so i went there because i wanted to know how they will approach it and then there was five master dowsers which were discussing what ley line is and i'm thinking so nobody knows what ley line is Mm. Because I thought that they will talk about different types of ley lines, you know, stronger, whatever, going east, west. So what, there, there is many, many topics which we can discuss about ley lines. But they were discussing how they understand ley lines. And I'm how thinking, oh, this is strange. This is strange that there is no you know, uh, no common understanding and definition of ley line. Mm. Uh, so, but, you know, I'm, I'm used to it. I just, yeah. as I said, I took many courses with different people just because I didn't want to play the smartest one who knows everything better. Um, but uh, so I just to join the crowd Sure. I had to know how crowd talks. Yeah, absolutely. Well, and I wonder too if it's related because in so many ways it, it kind of needed to be, you know, underground or hidden 
um, you know, it, it, like what you were saying, there's no official capacity and yet every uh, well company or water company like knows a water dowser and taps into that skill set even the even though they won't they won't put it on their website they won't talk about it publicly right and i think it's that kind of hidden uh nature of it where we you know it sort of had to be done you know and secretly or your grandfather would teach it to you i think that's uh, where a lot of that you know differences in terminologies and understandings so but it's interesting because you know your point is that we need uh standard kind of standardized languaging definitions around these things. And it sounds like that might have been what that panel discussion about, well, let's define a ley line. It kind of sounds like that's what they were wrestling with is how do we, you know, come up with a standard definition for that? I was speaking at um, at the West Western Dowsers. I don't remember how they are called now. Um, but anyway, Western Canada uh, and they have this conference, they used to have this conference in the place, which was called um, 100 Miles. Mm. And I went there and I had, a, I had a lecture. So I started to talk about negative green and positive green and, and the negative and positive colors. And then um, I finished and the next person had a lecture and and I was in uh, in the um, um, vendor's room and then this woman came to me after some time and she said you know what this woman told told us that you said that there is negative green just because your uh, just because your English is broken and I said, well, I feel sorry for her if she doesn't know what negative green is. That's fine. I mean, you know. So I heard very many different comments about it. And I'm not saying that my English is, is, is excellent because it's not. I was an editor, so I know <laughs> how to the beauty and, yeah. and, and language in, in full colors which I am unable to do it, to do that in English. But on the other hand, well, that was interesting. Um, I, of course, scratched my ego a little, but sure. I thought, well, I have to really go for courses and see how people call it. But they didn't talk about negative because it yeah. wasn't known. So. Yeah. I don't think I've ever, I, I'm not familiar with that concept. I know it'll take yeah. us off topic, but what is negative green, positive green? Tell me a little bit about that. Well, negative green is a vibration, which is the most misunderstood mm -hmm. uh, vibration by, by majority of people. Just because, uh, so basically in 1930s when they were, um, French scientists, when they were researching the pyramids and Sphinx and all those structures mm. uh, in Egypt, they found out the location of colors based on the pyramid. If you think, if anyone think that we know the will color for a long time, then we are mistaken because it's almost 100 years, but it's only 100 years when we know it, and that was Andre de Belizal and Leo Shomery who found this, mm. the research around the pyramids, and they found specific location of specific colors. And therefore they found out that to the south, there is a um, color which is green from our heart, like heart chakra, yeah. released. And they called it green I mean, they, they marked that green is uh, vibrated from here. And then they were finding the rest of the colors. And then they found out one more vib vibration because they knew um, there is a specific pattern of colors. So we yeah. we will not go deep into this. But yeah. anyway, yeah. they found one more and they didn't know how to call it. So they decided to call it negative green, not because it was bad, but yeah. because it was 
on the wheel on the opposite side from green. Got so it. they so they they add the plus to the green from visible spectrum of light, which is heart chakra color. Mm. So in Europe, that would be green plus. Mm -hmm, and then mm -hmm. the bottom to the, uh, to the uh, sorry, north, it would be G minus, which mm. means negative green, which has two aspects. One is extremely healthy and healing and one of the most beautiful, fantastic, um, uh, vibrations in healing and one is very detrimental interesting or any yeah. life force yeah and because you are afraid of negative green as negative green in its electrical aspect therefore they are afraid in general about negative green mm. but but it is uh, it has two faces we need to know that every color has two faces, which mm. means it negative aspect and positive aspect. But that's that's like this different story. Yes, that and is. That's a whole other topic for another interview. Yeah, <laughs> but that's really that's really fascinating. I want to ask you about the pendulum that you held up because earlier when you oh. were demonstrating, what is my gosh, it's massive and gorgeous. Tell me, yeah. Yes. So, <clears throat> so I was really the first person who brought, at least to Canada, uh, therapeutic pendulums. Yeah. They are called healing, healing in Europe, but because healing here uh, belongs to medical profession and we are not trained medical um, professions. So, <clears throat> So I decided to call them therapeutic pendulums. Yeah, tell us about pendulums therapeutic pendulums. Differ mm -hmm. from basic pendulums uh, because they vibrate the higher vibrations, which means they operate on the vibration from above the, gr the green uh, color, which means heart chakra, which is blue, indigo, violet, white light and then some of them go into gold light okay mm. now the shape vibrates so if one uses therapeutic pendulum then you kind of join forces with this with this pendulum with the shape so shape vibrates and you are pulling your energy as well, your universal energy, which which goes through you. And mm. then all together, you can help people balance their health. Wow. If one is not a healer per se, which means does not have the ability to stream more energy than he needs for himself, then the, then the shape will vibrate the energy. And this energy is passed to the body. Mm. to be healed either my own body or someone else but we need to understand that basic pendulums cannot uh, radiate much energy and that's why they they have the amount of energy which allow them to survive on material level mm. right? so they will exist they will you know we will see them touch them and so on but they have no spare energy to share with anything for anyone. Yeah. If someone can heal with basic pendulum like teardrop or acorn or whatever, um, whichever simple, simple version of it, ball, for example, yeah. then it means that the person is strong healer yeah. and pass and it's coming through them. <laughs> energy through the pendulum not a pendulum really now the 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 energy is always radiated by surface mm. that's mm -hmm. why if there are people who are older than i guess 30 40 years you will remember probably the radiators in your rooms Mm -hmm. That's right. To heat this. And then if you wanted 
to hit it more, then you had to, at certain point, not only hit the water, but if hitting the water will not do the work, you had to add one uh, element because you needed to enlarge the surface through which energy in the form of heat is released out. Got it. Right? Yeah. That's why therapeutic pendulums come, come in different sizes. People here, very many people now, are used to working with heavier pendulums. Mm -hmm. but not everyone. So there are pendulums which are smaller and there are pendulums which are bigger. For example, mm -hmm. this pendulum, and I'm not saying that everyone has to have it, but this pendulum <gasps> weighs almost two pounds. Wow. And okay. then are they made of different materials too? I would imagine. Well, they can, this one is made of wood as well, mm -hmm. just because people like the shape, but they cannot like, they cannot stand the weight. Yeah. But if pendulum is heavier, it is more precise. You right. See? Yeah. Because, because when it catches the energy, the pendulum start to, if it's light pendulum, it start to swing like crazy. And then when, in, when you scan the body, for example, and the type of energy changes, then it takes time to lose the energy from previous movement and change into the opposite movement. Yeah. It's physics. Yeah. While heavy, heavy pendulum works slowly, therefore, when it catches the different energy, it reacts right away. And move in opposite direction. That's so interesting. I'm not saying that everyone has to have the humongous pendulum, but that's that's the situation. Uh, with that's why they become bigger. Um, in the most known pendulum, see this one. Ah, yes. Shape of Isis. This pendulum is called Isis because mm. it was found in the tomb, one of mm. the. Tomb. And the shape is also uh, drawn on the inner wall, walls of the uh, pyramids. But this pendulum may have smaller size, but increased amount of rings, because every ring here is amplifier because it increases the surface. So we can have the classic one, which was found in Egypt, Egypt have four rings that's how it was found but now we work not every number works for for um, proper vibration of isis but we can go up to 16 uh, rings which makes the pendulum small but still very potent Okay, so there are different ways of that's increasing amazing. the surface, but that's 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 the nature of a uh, therapeutic pendulum. With therapeutic pendulum, you can find a, a solution for your problems or predicaments just because it it is a pendulum. Mm -hmm. So pendulum always follows your intention. That's why we always have to have firm intention before we will touch the pendulum and start to douse. Oh, that's powerful. Alicia, this has been such a treat. Um, you are so clearly so knowledgeable and uh, I feel like we could have seven more conversations at least just jumping off on any of the many things that you talked about today. Um, if there were, you know, a last uh, takeaway, a last pearl of wisdom um, that you'd like to leave uh, with our audience, what would that be? I think that even though you will take courses, 
the main compass is always here. So if what I'm saying is true to you or not, it's, it's for you to decide. If you will apply this in your life or in dowsing practice or not, it's your, it's your decision because you need to follow your path. This is yours. You can change it. You can adjust it. But it is yours. Own it. Mm. And continue working on it and walking it. And I always say to people who have courses with me, I care, therefore I don't mind. <laughs> I love it. Oh, thank you so much. That was wonderful. You're very welcome. Thank and you I for joining us today. See you all at the conference, and we will have the blast with dowsing.